Good morning guys, episode three is about to happen here in Namibia. We're leaving uh, Coleman's Cop, the ghost town. If you guys uh, haven't checked that video, what are you even doing with your life? Um, and if you have checked that video out and you're ready for this one, we are heading towards Sosisvlei today. So it's gonna be awesome. But first, today's video is sponsored by squarespace.com. If you're looking for a place to start a travel photography blog or portfolio, Squarespace is a really good spot to start. There's lots of really good blogging tools with a lot of cool features like geotagging, simultaneously posting to your social media, and really clever templates to make portfolios or galleries look really good, really easy. So whether you're looking to sell images or just have a really cool place to show them off, Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and you'll get a little bit of a discount on your first purchase. Okay, we made it to Sosa's play. I got candy in my mouth. I wasn't talking with my mouth full, it's so rude. We've got a lady section over there and the boys are over here. Camp is set up, we're dusty and uh, we're running a little bit late. So we have three nights here, so I think we're kind of going to take things easy today and maybe just drive into the park. And I was going to say try to find some wildlife, but you don't have to try very hard. There's literally an oryx over there eating at another campsite and I see another one over there. The divide between the human realm and the wild is pretty blended here in Sosisvlei, so it's not hard to find animals like oryx or springbok. And unlike a lot of other wildlife locations in the world, you do have stunning landscapes to photograph them within even if you can't hold the camera level. So after an evening drive and a night camping, we found ourselves back in the dunes for sunrise. Okay, it's morning. I would say I slept great last night, but I got a little bit of sleep in the tent. The dunes here in Sosa's Flare are just so impressive. Basically anywhere you look, there's a photo, but the dunes are kind of far away. You've got this huge flat and then the dunes are there. and you kind of just need to telephoto things and pick things out. Uh, I have a really like a favorite spot for sunrise, which is not really a spot that tourists come. They kind of come blasting past here, but it's this dead tree area. And I think there's some fun to be had here. Fun, but work. In Namibia, you can't really use camera tricks like long exposure for a great image or epic light to save a bad composition. You need to work to find a great photo, even in epic places like this. So I've kind of just found a focal distance I feel like works. And then I've just kind of been walking along the front. I feel like the trap that you fall into is constantly just moving closer to the dunes. But here, once you find your focal distance, you're just trying to find balance in your photo or trying to find separation in the trees. So just walking up and down and up and down until you find that is kind of what works. I think I found something kind of cool. There's three trees and that are kind of lined up pretty, pretty nicely on this dune. And I think when the sun comes up, the sun's coming up from that way, it'll light up the dune first and I might have some like dune pin glow <laughs> on the top of the dunes here. And the dune pin glow happened. And that light you get here on the dunes might be a bit fleeting, but it's dramatically perfect when it happens. The dunes are just so, so nice. It just works no matter what you do. I think it's easy to get distracted by them though as well. And all of these awesome trees are, they're awesome. <laughs> so I wanna photograph them as well and give them a little bit more credit in the photo. And the dune, like I said, can be a bit distracting. So I'm shooting straight into almost backlight. Sun's that way, trees are that way. The focus of this photo is kind of almost like desolate trees. Um, almost silhouettes of them with some yellows punching through. It's almost a little bit apocalyptic, if you will. And uh, yeah, the settings are pretty simple. And normally in Namibia, you're not going crazy with long exposures or anything. So I've got a quarter second F11, and I do have a four stop grad on and a polarizer. The polarizer here 
And the dunes is so key because it really brings out that contrast and color. There might not be a lot of color to this photo, but the color that is there really pops. And after spotting another oryx, we headed back to camp to avoid the midday heat and waited out until the late afternoon to wander back into the red sand dunes and its most famous icon, Deadlay. Okay, I wish I had it on camera, but we just had a bit of a misadventure. We drove to the parking lot. Our vehicle is so heavy because it's got the huge cab on it that we sunk in the sand. And we were stuck for a solid like 20 minutes until we could get out and it's hot. But we're on our way to photo location two here in Sosa's Flay, which is actually called Dead Flay. And uh, it's like a one kilometer hike through the desert. We can't be there for sunset sunset but we can definitely be there for, you know, up until an hour before sunset. So that's where we're crawling to. The reason we can't be here at sunset is because the park gates close an hour after sunset and it's a 90 minute drive and hike to Deadlay. Luckily, it's so beautiful it doesn't really matter. This is one of the few places on the planet that I've returned to photograph that I feel no pressure at all at. Because last time we were here, I took one of my top, I'd say 10 favorite photos I've ever taken. And it just takes a lot of pressure off, honestly. I kind of just feel like wandering around and enjoying it. I'm not gonna do that, but I kind of feel like doing it. So I'm gonna really take my time. I'm gonna wander around. I'm gonna play with multiple lenses, probably do most things on my 70 to 200. And I'm just gonna, you know, work compositions, try to find symmetry or, the rule of threes or just something that looks cool. I'm gonna follow the rule of does it look cool. The only photography rule that really matters is the rule of does it look cool. But if you're ever struggling with composition because things don't look cool, lean into one of the rules. In Deadlay, I leaned into framing quite a bit. I think the big mistake I made the first time I came here was trying to be too wide. I shot a lot of wide angle images and they look good, but they kind of missed that compression. And my lips are super dry, sorry. <laughs> the last time I was here, when I created that image that I love, it was actually almost kind of an accident. I was here shooting a lot of wide angle stuff. I was liking this stuff, but not loving it. And it was time to go, so I switched on my uh, 100 to 400 and just held it up as I was waiting for other people and found that composition. And I think my biggest tip for dead flay, and maybe Namibia in general, or Sosis flay in general, is long lenses. So I'm shooting my 70 to 200 today. I haven't yet felt like I need less than 70, and I haven't felt like I need more than 200. I have found a photo I quite like. Uh, I like doing stuff like this here. You've got these two dead trees that are singular, and then you've got this really cool one in the background, and I'm framing the middle one between the other two. Almost all my images from Deadlay on this visit involved framing. In fact, I got a bit obsessed with it. But it's good to have a focus when you're photographing something. It allows you to simplify the process of finding cool compositions. Okay, we've really got to get out of here because we're pushing it for the gate closing especially if we get stuck again. <laughs> but I made a second photo and it's not on this camera. It's, it's actually wide angle. And I don't know if I love it, but I think it has potential to be special. And the reason I say that is it's really bright, so it's hard to tell. There's uh, this big, huge tree. And I'm sorry about the sun being there, but there's a huge tree and then it kind of frames another one. And then that one frames another one. But then on top of it, the sun's also hitting one of the branches and creating a sun star. So I'm shooting at F16. But I think it was cool. And what else is cool is we're coming back here for sunrise. So let's jump to that and I'll see you in the morning. And we're back this morning, sound effects included. Generally, 
Sosa's filet, I mean dead filet, is better at sunrise. Because you just get a little bit better light. At sunset, the light's coming in that way, and you get almost too much light in here. At sunrise, it comes up behind here, and you get a little bit more uh, stuff to play with. But you can't be here right at sunrise because you have to drive from the drive from the gate. So we're about 20 minutes after sunrise. The image I took last night with the sun star, I want to try to do it again right now um, if I can find that tree again. Oh, I found it and it's glorious. A perfection of contrast, frames and light. This might be my new favorite image from Sos Display. But beware of landscape photography vultures. Okay, so I'm in my spot that I found yesterday. I'm here for two reasons still. Because, well, I'll just tell you one reason. The first reason is because I'm trying to work a second shot out with the same tree by framing. Basically cutting out the first tree altogether. I've switched on my 70 to 200 and I'm just going to telephoto through. I'm trying to create like an 8 by 10 frame of the first tree to just get the middle and the last tree. I'll tell you the second reason in a second. You stranger with the camera up my booty, you're the second reason. Okay, the second reason I uh, was hanging out there is because I love that photo. And I feel very proud of that photo because I've been coming here for eight, nine years working on photos like that and just trying to develop something and find something. And I, for me, it was really cool finding that. And then this guy over here came right up, looked at my frame, liked my photo, set up literally on my leg to copy my image. Essentially the shot that I've, I've picked out, it's called comp stomping, but it's like comp stomping to the next degree. It's like literally physically shooting through your legs. Don't, just don't do that. that, that that's not cool. It's not, a, it's not right. I mean, nah. So yeah, my gears have been grinded, but I'm trying to remain calm. Calming down and going to make another photo. I'm calm guys, I promise. And normally I'm chill. I don't even usually care when most people copy my photos. But in the words of Drake, imitation isn't flattery, it's just annoying me. At least pay for the workshop, fool. Anyways, after leaving Deadblay, we ended our time in Sos Display with a classic. Okay, we're at our last photo location. Oh that I'm going to film anyway on this Sosa display trip. This particular dune is dune 39. I love it. It's a really, I don't know, it just works. You got all these beautiful trees in the bottom and then you get this S turn and it's a long ways away. So I almost went 500 millimeter. I'm at uh, 100 to 400 right now, right at 400 and going way telephoto on it. And just kind of playing with some details. I feel like here in Sosa display, you have the dunes and they're awesome and yes some there's some cool panos to be made but for the most part it's the details that really make this special so i've got a polarizer on um the reason i'm sitting here by the way hiding behind this door is just because i was trying to get a little bit more stabilization it is kind of windy uh, my settings are f8 1 over 80 iso 100 and like i said there's a polarizer on there as well and i'm gonna wait until the light comes a little bit softer and this should be good. Okay, a bit of a common thread from the rest of these Namibia videos might be a little bit of lost footage. I lost a small chunk of footage and I have no idea where it is, including the end of today's video. So the photos came out pretty cool at the dunes and um yeah that's it in the next video we're heading uh up the coast up the skeleton coast so i'll see you guys there peace